Cave Studio presents Orbital Conflict, a game for two to four players that takes 30 to 60 minutes and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Orbital Conflict, you're going to have your own space station. You're going to place modules on the space station and then extend those modules. Modules are things like space bases, power plants, reactors, energy pods, armor, that kind of thing, right? And you're going to be utilizing those to protect themselves and gather resources, which will in turn give you victory points. And if you want to go on the offensive, you can start using drones and asteroids to attack your opponent's modules and space stations. And the objective of the game is once the entire deck of the cards for your orbital conflict, the different uh, modules, run out, you're going to check your victory points, and whoever has the most victory points is the winner at the end of the game. Now, there's of course some interesting aspects to the game. You are building in front of yourself, and you can kind of build and customize how you want. And there's also investor cards, and investor cards are cards that are going to ask you for requirements that you can complete. And if you do, you can gather those cards and place them in front of you and gather points. However, you can also push them on your opponents, because you can only have three total which we'll talk about more below, but it has an interesting feel to it. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you what the game looks like, what it comes with, and a round of play for Orbital Conflict. Welcome to the game Orbital Conflict, the setup, and I'll explain a little bit in a walkthrough. So you're gonna start with the rule book. You're going to have a deck of investor cards, a deck of these conflict cards or station cards, and initiative markers to indicate who the first player is. Depending on the number of players in the game will determine how many cards you start with in this deck. In a two-player game, you start with 48. In a three, you start with 72. And then in a four-player game, you start with all the cards in the deck. We're only going to show you a three-player game, so I'm going to go ahead and set these cards aside, along with one initiative marker, because you will only need one in the game. After that, I'm going to go ahead and move the rulebook here, and you're going to shuffle both of these decks of cards. Then, give each player five cards. These are the cards they'll be utilizing to build on their space station, modules, and extensions. After that, then you're going to begin the game by giving one player the initiative marker. And I'll just go ahead and simply put it to this guy here. I'm going to move these away to the side because you're only going to need to see this one player and learn the phases of the game just with this character alone. Now, the first phase is the draw phase. And the way the draw phase works is you're going to take two cards from the deck and place them in your hand. You're also then going to turn two investigator cards. After you do that, everybody else will do the same. They will draw two, they will flip over investor cards, put them, putting them either to the side or in front of them, and then they'll move on to the next phase. And the next phase is the main phase of the game. And the way the main phase works is you can play any cards from your hand with black text. You can simply use them as instants, or basically when they say that you can utilize them, you can play them or you can play them face up or face down on the field. These are going to form modules. So if you played a bunch of these guys here, that would be three modules. Or you could play one module with two extensions. You can choose to play them however you want. And like I said before, you can even play them face down and face up as well. There are certain cards like this one here where you can't use it as a module or extension because it only has bl the black background with white text. Then instead you can use this as a discard to gain the desired effect. Now, let's go ahead and show you how it works when you play cards down. You can only play up to two cards each round that have this purple symbol. These are victory points for the end of the game. And you can play any number of cards otherwise, provided you have the resources in order to play them. So in this case, I have a card that has these three astronaut symbols and one energy. So I'm going to need to play a card first that will give me energy. I play that card, a solar panel. I can then play a habitat on top of that. And I've met my one purple card for the, uh, one, one of the two purple cards for the round. And I can keep going if I'd like. Now, I still have one energy and three astronauts and some of those car these cards might require them. I've got this one here and that's going to give me one energy. So maybe I will, hmm, what do I want to do here? Maybe I'll play this guy here, that is a reactor, and then I'll go ahead and play this communication device right here on top of it. Now I've got my two modules and two extensions, and I've played my two purple cards, which are going to net me two, two bonus points at the end of the game. I could play these if I want to, I could set them aside, or I can save them for later, and I think I'll just go ahead and save them for later. 
after I've played all my cards that I want to from my hand by either discarding them for their black, uh, their back background and white text, or played them down as modules and extensions, or discarded them to the discard pile, I can then go to the investor aspect area. And how this works is pretty simple. If you have the required traits, you may take one and give it to yourself, or you can choose to push one on an opponent. If you can do neither, you simply discard them both. Now to take one, you have to have the requirements. So in this case, it says you need to have two spaceships in order to gain this card. And I don't have any. And this one over here, it says I need to have two planets. So in this case, neither of them would be good for me. I'll go ahead and look for one that I can actually utilize to show you or explain to you in a better way. Okay, this power gun here. Each of them also has a victory points uh, condition that you're going to have to meet or you're going you're to gain at the end of the game. And you can only have three of these cards total. So I'll go ahead and just use these two here. Now let's say that I had a boatload of energy. Maybe I just had this here and I met the requirement here. I could place this in front of me and I can have a total of these three, uh, three of these cards at any one point. So why do I say that? Well, because when you gain these cards, somebody can push them onto you. So for instance, let's say that I didn't meet these requirements, which I don't. And let's say one of my opponents had these three cards over with them. Instead of gaining these cards, I can push them on an opponent, provided that they have the requirements. When you push, you'll simply take a card, place it on either side, and remove the other corresponding side. So you can only have three total. And that's a good way of reducing their victory points at the end of the game. The other one will get discarded, or if you can't use either one of them, they'll both get discarded. If the deck runs out, you will shuffle it and redraw them out again. After that, everyone will do it, and then you're going to have to check the end phase of the game. The end phase is when this deck runs out. If that happens, the game is over and your tally points up. If not, you'll go into the combat phase. And the way combat works is you're going to have each of your modules will represent a certain number of shields. And they're each individually separate. Some cards are going to do combat damage, and other space stations will do combat damage as well. You're going to assign damage based on each module to another module, or together in one combat swoop, and you're going to attack. You can attack anybody you want or nobody. The way that attacking works is if your attack is equal to or greater than the module in which you are attacking based on their shields, you will do damage based on your attack. So for instance, if I attacked this solar panel habitat, for one damage, that would be equal to or more than this specific module's defense. In which case, based on the amount of damage I did, which would be one, I would reduce that many cards from it from the back to the front. If I did two damage, I would remove both of them. If I did three, still both of them. You would remove all of them that they have. After that, everybody will take part in combat, and then the round is going to end. You're going to pass the initiative to the next player, and the play will continue with the draw phase, where everybody draws two cards, turns two of these over, and then plays cards from their hand to make modules and extensions. You get the idea. We'll push-pull the investors, and then we'll do combat if the game isn't already over by then. Once the game is over, you're going to tally up all the investor cards you have in front of you. So hopefully you have three of them, and that looks pretty good there. And you're also going to tally up any victory points that you have on your modules and or extensions. Whoever has the most points is the winner of the game Orbital Conflict. Okay, let's come up and talk about it. This is a tableau building, space station creating style game. Now, it does have combat elements but it's not as much as I actually originally thought. And that's because there's a lot of ways to kind of deflect from taking that damage. There's cards that will prevent damage from being done. There's some cards that will do additional damage and some that can do a certain amount to multiple different stations. Additionally, if you want to be more reckless, there are cards there like the, uh, the, the chamber that has a bunch of energy, that reactor. If that blows up, it can destroy all of your space stations if you're not careful. So you have to be very, very aware that yes, some cards are better than others, but there's a cost to playing them. And that cost could be resources or it could be a very detrimental effect if they get destroyed. There's cards that you can play from your hand, like the Asteroid Belt. They can, basically you're flinging asteroids at your opponent's modules and extensions, or you can play them on yourself and use them as a defense, which is kind of an interesting back and forth as you want to play it. Uh, overall, this game is a lot of fun. I enjoyed the tableau management aspect. All the artwork is solid. The component quality is 
fine. It's a card game. It's got cards in it. It comes with an extra initiative token, which I don't know why it does, but it does. And it also has the additional cards for additional player count. Now, the game isn't very lengthy. Maybe it is about a half an hour to 45 minutes to play. And your first game will probably take about an hour as you learn the rules to it. Because I didn't explain fully how cards get turned over and when they get flipped over. And there's certain specifics to how cards can do that and how you can play certain cards based on what you have available. And when cards are turned face to the side because they don't have the resources, you cannot use them, which causes a chain reaction, or at least can cause a chain reaction to all of your modules if one thing gets destroyed. So you have to be very aware of what you need to protect, when you need to protect it, and what is worth removing from your hand in order to make sure that cards do not destroy whatever that item might be or that module or extension might be. Now, that being said though, it is a fun game. I can't think of a lot of negatives for this. I just think that certain players are gonna find this specifically in their wheelhouse where others may not. There is a lot of thinking involved in this game. It does have that combat element and you can potentially really mess somebody over. So if you're somebody who likes more casual, relaxed style gameplay, this is gonna be more on the strategic slash combative nature, but it's not fully combative. It does have a lot of building and using, you know, using the best tools in your hand to create the best station possible. And at the end of the game, it proves that. The other interesting thing about this too, the, the last thing I wanna really touch on, is the fact that you're gonna have those little cards, and those little cards are basically going to give you the most, that's how you're gonna get a lot of your victory points at the end of the game. Players are gonna push those on you, and you're gonna be constantly doing a tug of war, hoping cards come out, hoping you get the right one so you can keep them on your module, while your opponents are doing everything they possibly can to make sure that you get less points in the game by pushing them on you if they think that pulling them is not a better idea. And they have both of those options, which is really interesting how victory points can go because it has a swing of favor. Even if you have the best station, you can actually lose by somebody else pulling those cards in front of them and gathering those points, which makes it a nice catch-up mechanic, I suppose. Anyway, overall, Over a Conflict is a lot of fun, and if the game sounds remotely interesting to you, I suggest you take a look at it down below, link in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I look forward to building an orbital station, utilizing modules and extensions with you.